Hey y'all, I am back for the dreaded September budget review. I will be completely honest, I have been putting off making this video just because Basically, the thumbnail is not clickbait. I spent over $10,000 this month, and that is just insanity to me. I don't think that I have ever spent that much money in a single month in my entire adult life. But as always here on my channel, I am transparent with y'all, and I break it all down line by line in my budgets every month. So we'll take a look at where that $10,000 went, you probably have noticed that I am back home now and the inside of the house is done. Everything is painted and I've obviously got my couch in and I'm pretty much through decorating everything for now. I could use some wall art back here. It's kind of blank um, and a couple other places in the house, but I've spent enough money this month. So that's something that can be put off till later. <laughs> Intruder alert. Every time I try to film or start talking, he comes over here and tries to see what I'm doing. So, sorry y'all. Anyway, you may have noticed the hair is wet. I tend to film on days that I have to go into work. That is just how it works out best for me. And as much as I've been trying to put off making this video, I have some projects outside of the house that I'm also working on. And today it's raining like cats and dogs outside. So I decided that I could not put off making this video any longer. So here we are. So grab yourselves a drink because I know this is gonna be a long one. If y'all even clicked on this video, then kudos to you. You're the real MVP here. If you're new here, I work in healthcare, I do ultrasound for a living, and I work third shift, so I tend to film videos before I go into work, and then I'll edit them whenever I can later. So because this one is going to be a long video for me, I will try to figure out how to break it up into chapters. I've noticed that some channels have like these timestamp things that you can click on to skip to certain parts of the video. And if I can figure out how to do that, then I'll do that for this one. Obviously starting with the intro here and then we'll jump into my budget line by line. But being that I have spent so much money working on the house here recently, I thought that it would be good to do a little bit of a home tour towards the end of the video as well. So I'll put that after the budget review and then we'll wrap it up and talk about what the financial goals for me are going to be going forward. Because if y'all have been here for a while, then you know that I do not make $10,000 in a single month. So yeah, we're gonna have to talk about financially what I plan on doing moving forward from here. As always, the ultimate goal for me is financial independence to retire early. However, you will notice that this month, my savings rate is pretty abysmal for me. I love to aim for a 40 to 50% savings rate. I think once I get my consumer debts paid off, I can get that a lot higher. But as of right now, that's what I try to shoot for every month. And yeah, this spoiler alert, this month was nowhere near that. So all of that being said, don't forget to leave me a like down below for the YouTube algorithm. Don't forget to subscribe and we will jump into my budget. All right, y'all, so here we are. I am a Google Sheets fan. That's what I like to use for my budgets. Here, starting at the top as always, we are starting with my income portion of the budget. I do black out my income sources just for some privacy there, but I did show y'all one line item this month. I did get another YouTube paycheck. This is my second payout from YouTube and my first one I got a couple months ago. So if I get enough to get a YouTube payout every couple of months, I think that'll be great. This 9125 is the portion that I kept for myself. I do hold a little bit back for taxes in a high yield savings account. So for totals down here at the bottom, you can see that I had budgeted to bring in about $9,600 this month. Not all of that is earned income. Um, I did, I'll go ahead and tell y'all before we get down to that section of the budget. I went ahead and drained my savings account. I had 2,500 in there, so that was a big help. And also my mom sent me some money, which was a big help. We'll get to that once we start going down this list of the bills and spending section of my budget. But 
but I thought that I was going to bring in about $9,600. I actually ended up bringing in a little over 11 and a half thousand for September, but again, that wasn't all earned income. All right, looking at my bills and spending here, this is some of it for the month. Let's just start at the top once again. My house payment, same as always, $545. My power bill, I budgeted $160, came in under at $112.17. This third column here is just notes that I use for myself to remind myself either when I paid the bill or when it's gonna be taken out automatically. You get the idea. My water bill, I budgeted $50, came in at $40.87. Doing good so far, right? Internet, I thought it was gonna be about $150. I had to upgrade to an unlimited plan if I wanted to keep doing YouTube. And um, I know the unlimited plan is $150, but once you factor in taxes and fees and everything, it ended up being $160.68, and I expect that that is what it's going to be going forward from here on out. I live in a very rural part of Western North Carolina, and there's really not a whole lot of options for me as far as internet goes. Satellite internet is really my only choice and it's expensive. Gas for my car, I budgeted $100 and for the first time in a long time, I actually went over here. I came in at $117.12. It is what it is. I just had to do some extra driving this month. Next after that, Jim, I'm a member of Planet Fitness and they recently reopened in my local area and they took out the monthly membership fee from my checking account, but it's a prorated month since they were closed for the previous few months. So they only took out $8.18. Next, ARDMS, this stands for American Registry of Diagnostic Medical Sonographers, of which I'm a member, and I have to pay an annual fee of $85 to maintain my ultrasound license with them, so that also came out this month. Home upgrades, here we go. So. I budgeted to spend about $2,650 to get my house painted. And I did get the house painted. It ended up being about $2,800. They had to do an extra coat of paint on my ceilings. So I came in a little bit over budget from the home painting. Why do I have $4,431 listed here? Well, they discovered a problem when they were painting my house and I have some windows at the top of my house that go all the way across the front of the house and when they were up there painting, they noticed that the outside of the frame around all of the windows were cracked and where the wood was cracked, water had gotten in and was causing the wood outside to rot. So I have to get that taken care of. That's just not something that I can sit on. So thankfully the guy that I hired to do the home painting, he's also a carpenter. He can build an entire house if I needed him to. So he offered to fix it and he did such a good job with all of the paint around the house that I decided to just go ahead and have him do what he needed to fix my windows. So that was an extra about $1,750 there. That is why I came in so much over budget for this line item here. Um, and we'll get to the details of how I'm handling that in just a minute. Amazon. I budgeted to spend $430.66 for September. This for $30.66 covered a driveway gate for me that had broken and I needed to get a new one to replace my gate opener. So $430.66 of the $842 I spent at Amazon in September was that. Everything else um, is related to things that I needed for a project that I'm working on outside. I'll show y'all that at the end of the video as well. Also, I had to get some more vitamins and just random household stuff too throughout the month. So I ended up spending a pretty penny at Amazon this month. Home goods, this is just various purchases that I've made at stores around town here to get some things for the house to help spruce it up since I was on a roll getting everything looking nice around here. And I thought I was gonna spend about $226.60 and I ended up spending $287.95. As the month went on, I would just pick up one or more things here and there and ended up going over budget there. Groceries, I budgeted $200 for that. Groceries for me includes 
food, alcohol, anything personal care related or household that I need. So budgeted $200 and came in at $213.88 for the month. That's not too bad. I think going forward, I'll probably bump this up to $250 just to be a little bit more realistic. Lowe's. So I spent a pretty penny at Lowe's this month as well. Um, I had budgeted to spend about $840 at Lowe's and I came in under at $7. 96.39 and this was actually due to a mistake that I had made for replacing one of the light fixtures at the house and I may have inadvertently discovered a saving money fi hack if you will. So that light fixture I just showed y'all, retail price at Lowe's is $200. And I had actually bought the wrong style of light when I first went to Lowe's. I wasn't paying attention and I bought the flush mount version of this light that doesn't have the chain so that it can hang down like a pendant. So since my ceilings here are slanted, you can't have a flush mount light. You have to have the one that hangs down. Anyway, I had to return that flush mount light and I noticed when I was looking up on Lowe's online to see if they had the proper light fixture at my local Lowe's, I noticed that they only had one left in stock according to their website. So I was like, oh no, I've got to hurry and take this back and exchange it so that I can get the proper light. So I took the old one back and I was in the light section looking and looking and looking for this light. I thought somebody had bought it. I finally asked and lo and behold, the last one that they had in stock was the display version and it was over in a clearance section. They had marked this down 75% off just because it was the display version of this light. So y'all, that $200 light, was marked down to $50. So I grabbed it and booked it to check out with it. I thought, great, I've saved a little bit of money here on this deal, but it doesn't actually stop there because uh, I think that the cashier who was checking me out misunderstood the 75% off thing and she took 75% off of the sale price. So. Y'all, that light ended up costing me $12. I'm not even kidding there. And that's why I am saying that I may have inadvertently found a fi hack for y'all because if you have a larger purchase like that, a new light fixture, or I've replaced ceiling fans around here too, you know, whatever the case may be, it might be worth it to check online for places like Lowe's and Home Depot just to see if they happen to have one left in stock because I'd be willing to bet that if that's the case, then likely it's the display version and maybe you can get a good deal. All right, so that is why I was able to save a little bit of money here on my Lowe's totals for the month. And I was really grateful for that. I will take any savings that I can get at this point. Continuing on in the budget, the next thing is the lawyer fee. It was $450. That was my half of what it cost to file for separation. If you weren't aware, my husband and I recently separated. That was kind of the catalyst that I had for getting all of the things done around the house that have been needing to get done. And yeah, there it is. Next, boarding for Rello, my Irish wolfhound who was nosing his way into the intro of this video. I boarded him while the house was getting painted. One, to make it easier for the painters while they were here working. And two, because I thought that it probably probably would not be a healthy thing for him to be here in the house breathing in paint fumes while they were working. So I ended up boarding him for a week at the vet and his boarding fee for the week was supposed to be $164. And while he was there, they ended up calling to ask me if it was all right if the vet took a look at him because he was having some stress diarrhea while he was boarding. And I told them, of course, you know, do what you gotta do for him. So they ended up putting him on some meds for a couple of days while he was there and that cleared up. He's fine now. He just got a little stressed out, I think, because that was the first time that he's ever been boarded by himself at the vet. 
Next, Big Lots. I had budgeted to spend $818.53 at Big Lots. That is exactly what I spent. I got my new couch and coffee table and end tables from Big Lots. Yes, I know that Big Lots is not high end when it comes to furniture. We don't need high end furniture, do we? But yeah, I do not need a high-end furniture, you guys. Not with it just being me and a giant dog here at the house. So again, I was able to get a good deal at Big Lots, actually. The sectional couch that I bought, the retail price on it was $1,000, I believe. And the coffee table and end tables that I bought also were about $200. But I waited until the Labor Day sale at Big Lots. And I had the Labor Day sale going on. I also had a 15% off of your entire purchase coupon and they also gave me an additional 10% off for being a healthcare worker. So I was able to save a lot of money purchasing this sectional couch, coffee table, and end tables. I feel like $800 for all of that is, is a pretty good deal. Next, Ingles. Ingles is a local grocery store actually, but this purchase did not go under groceries because I was going into Ingalls looking specifically for Heather. I noticed that last year, towards the end of August, beginning of September, Ingalls would get in Heather plants. And the reason I remembered this is because last year at the beginning of September, I actually spent two weeks in Scotland and I just absolutely loved all of the Heather in bloom there. So I went back this year just to see if they had any Heather at Ingalls and they got it in again. So I bought me a couple Heather plants for $14.94. Next is Target. So this is more home goods and home decor things that I picked up uh, spent $68.80 at Target for the month and next begins the line items of me eating out and getting fast food and spending a whole lot of money on restaurant spending that I normally don't do because while I was getting my house painted with me being a third shift worker I decided to just stay in a hotel room for a few days while they were working on the house. That was just the easiest thing to do. So I did end up spending some money y'all at fast food and trying to keep my costs down as much as I could while I was away from home. But still, it is what it is. Honey baked ham here. I got me a sandwich on the way to work one night. That was $11.11. .11. Krispy Kreme, <laughs> y'all saw in my health is wealth video earlier this month, there was a little trip to Krispy Kreme this month and I got me a half a dozen donuts for $8.54. Next, Starbucks. Graham, Stephanie, eat your heart out. I spent $18.13 at Starbucks this month. I wanted some good coffee while I was going into work and being away from home. It is what it is. I very rarely buy coffee out and I spent 18 bucks at Starbucks. Next, Little Caesars. That's kind of my pizza vice. Uh, spent $14.44 at Little Caesars. Next is Noodles and & Company and I spent about 20 bucks at Noodles and Company. This was a couple of different meals that I got on the way into work on a couple different nights. Next, Sonic, uh, $7.98 spent at Sonic one day. That concludes all of the restaurant and fast food spending for me for September, which for me is a lot. I hardly ever eat out or get fast food. So this is very atypical for me and this is not going to continue into October. Next rock. This is the outside project that I alluded to earlier. I will show you the details of it later in the video, but suffice it to say that six tons of rock for flower beds will cost you $583.15 to get it delivered to your house. That is what this line item is. Again, I'll show you that later on in the video. The last line item in my budget, mom, $4,240. So yeah, here is the story with that. So I mentioned earlier in the video that I had drained my savings account to help cover the home painting and all of the upgrades that I was doing around the house here. But if you've been following me, you know I only had $2,500 in my savings account. So the house painting was going to be a little bit more than the $2,500. I thought it was going to be $2,650. Ended up costing me $2,800. 
I also spent a lot of money getting new furniture and getting house plants and different things to brighten it up around here. And while they were painting and discovered this window problem that I have in the house, my mom was really kind enough to offer to front me the money to get the windows fixed and help cover some of the other upgrades that I've done around the house and I will pay her back ASAP for that. In truth, if it came right down to it, the projects that I'm working on around the house, the home painting, all of the projects I'm doing outside of the house, getting a new couch and all of the things that I have done this month, truly it could have waited until I had saved up the money myself to cover everything. Of course it could, but I'm glad that I went ahead and did it because if I had not gotten the house painted, I would not have known that there was a problem with the windows at the top of the house. So I'm glad that I went ahead and did this so that that problem could be identified and addressed. So I'm really grateful to my mom for fronting me the money to cover the difference in everything that I've spent this month. And I am definitely going to focus on paying her back first. That is priority number one right now. So grand totals here for the month. I thought that I was going to spend about $6,900 this month and I came in at just over $10,000 for the month. I came in at $10,126.31. I was able to send back $240 to my mom. So now I owe her an even 4,000 to get her paid back. Thank God the bills and spending section of this budget is over. This has been an insane month as far as spending for me, but you know what y'all, I, I really don't regret any of it. These were things that just needed to be done around here and I am honestly glad to have it done. My house now just has a completely different feel to it. It's no longer cluttered, dingy, it's clean, it's fresh, it's new, it's, it's really peaceful here now. And yeah, I really don't regret spending this much money this month. I, I think that it was worth it. Moving down into the debt section of my budget, I do have some debts that I am working on paying off. I have uh, consolidated student loans that I refinance through Earnest. They take out their payment automatically on the 17th every month. Payment this month was $475.19. Next is my car payment. That's $386 every month. Lastly, I have been seeing a holistic doctor. Again, check out my health is wealth updates if you would like to hear more about that. But I purchased a program from them with a zero interest thing as long as I pay it all off in a certain time frame, and I am working towards doing that so I will not have to pay interest on the program that I purchased. And for September, I had planned on putting $800 towards that debt but with all of the spending that I did in September, I only put $500 towards that debt and I'm going to plan on putting $800 towards the holistic doctor next month in October. So totals for debt this month, I thought that I was going to put $1,661.19 towards debt and I only put $1,361.19 towards debt for September. So here's a look at my debt breakdown, all of my debts as they currently stand. My student loans, my balance that I owe is $20,561.92. The interest rate on those student loans is a variable interest rate, but it is super low right now, and I don't expect that that is going to change anytime soon. It's only 2.06%. So out of my $475 payment, $437.38 went towards the principal that I owe, 781 went towards interest. As long as that interest rate stays nice and low on my student loans, I don't plan on aggressively paying those off. I will slow pay them and invest the difference instead. My car payment, I owe $16,078.93 on the car that I have. Interest rate on it is a little higher. It's at 5.44%. So I have a $386 payment and 317.76 went towards the 
principal, $68 went towards interest. Once I get to a point where I feel like I can breathe, then I will start aggressively paying off my car. And the holistic doctor, the balance that I owe them is $3,800. And that is 0% interest. So all of the $500 that I put towards that debt went towards the principal. So in total, all of my consumer debts here, I owe a little bit over $40,000. And if everything goes according to plan in October, then I'll hit another little milestone here. I will officially be under $40,000 worth of debt if everything goes according to plan in October, as hopefully it will. <laughs> My house, I don't have my current statement in yet for the house, so I'm not exactly sure what I owe. It's around $98,000 for this house, and the interest rate on it is 3.25% fixed. And over here to the side, I like to just keep track of my year-to-day totals of all of the debt that I have paid off and all the money that has been lost to interest. So in total, you can see this year, I have paid off $8,482.30 worth of debt. Interest, I have paid $1,170.13. So my grand total to debt this year is $9,652.43 so far. All right, my last section of my budget here. This is my investing and my fire tracking portion of the budget. I really enjoy this portion, but this month it is looking a little bare, admittedly. So I have a regular taxable investing account at M1 Finance, love them. Referral link for M1 is down in the description box below if you are interested. I did not contribute anything to my taxable account this month. I typically will put in $25 every Monday to that account. It has been paused right now just because of all of the hemorrhaging that I have been doing when it comes to spending this month. I also have a Roth IRA at M1. I did not contribute anything to that account this month. This third column over here keeps track of all of the balances in my various accounts. Next, I do have a taxable account at Fidelity, and this is just for a speculative play that I cannot get in M1 Finance. And that speculative play has actually been on a run-up recently. So I had a little extra money left over at the end of the month and I threw another $60 at that speculative play. Right now, my Fidelity account sits at $256.97. I have only put in $160 to that account. So, you know, that speculative play, it's, it's on the rise, but it's a high risk play and I'm sure that volatility will kick back in anytime. Next, my high yield savings account with Ally. Yeah, this is the account that had 2,500 in it. I earned a little bit of interest from them, a dollar and 69 cents. That is all that remains in that account right now. I took out the $2,500 to help cover all of the spending that I did this month. So that account is at a lowly dollar and 69 cents. Lastly, my retirement account through my employer. This has also changed this month. I was contributing. 16% towards my retirement account at work. And I have actually decreased that y'all. I have dropped it down to the level of the employer match. So that way I can at least get my employer match. I, but right now, with all of the spending that I've done, all of the money that I owe my mom, and also y'all, it's getting closer to the end of the year here, and I still haven't maxed out my Roth IRA. I know that I have until April 15th of next year to do that, but still, so far in 2020, I have only contributed $1,000 towards my Roth, so I still need to put $5,000 in that account, and I've only got until April to do that. So, for the time being, because my employer retirement account is my single largest account and I would like to take advantage of the tax advantage of the Roth IRA. I have decided that I am just going to leave my employer retirement contributions at the level of the match so that I can get a little bit of extra money in my paycheck right now to help pay back my mom, replenish my savings account and finish getting my Roth IRA maxed out for 2020. So I'm going to do all of those things as quickly as I can. And that way I can bump my retirement contributions back up. 
So yeah, that being said, I thought that I was going to put in about $900 as far as my contributions go for the month of September. That was at my 16% level, but the first paycheck was at that 16% that I got, and the second paycheck I had dropped it back down to the level of the match. So I only contributed $660.23 towards my work retirement savings this month, and my employer match I thought was going to be about $250, and it came in at $229.60. So grand totals for the month, I thought that I would send about $1,150 towards savings, investing, retirement. I came in at $949.92, which gives me an abysmal savings rate of 7.6% that y'all can see over here, y'all. That is way, way less than what I typically do. A 7% savings rate means you're going to be working a long time. And the goal for me is to get that savings rate back up to a respectable amount ASAP. And my am I fi yet? Am I financially independent yet? I am 6.34% of the way to my financial independence number. My goal is to get to 1.2 million saved or invested. And right now my accounts stand at just over $76,000. If you've been following me for a while, you'll know. Last month was a lot better month for the markets and everything. All of my accounts stood at just over 83,000. So yeah, we've come down quite a bit compared to last month. You can see here that my retirement account alone has gone down over $4,000 since August, but that's okay. You know, the markets go up and down. It'll be all right. I'm sure it'll come back in the long term. Final totals for the whole month of October. I thought that I was going to spend about $8,575.74 for the whole month. I came in at $11,547.50 and I have about 58 bucks to roll over into October. Okay guys, if you're still with me, thank you very much because as I have been filming these segments of this video, I've been adding them into iMovie so that I can keep track of the order of everything and I'm not even done filming yet for this video and I've already got 52 minutes and 57 seconds of footage to edit down. So I have no idea how long this video is gonna end up being, but like I say, if you're still with me, Thank you. That will do it for the budget portion of this video. And normally that is the end of my budget videos that I put up here on YouTube. We take a look at what I've spent, discuss financial goals going forward, and that's it. But this month, since I did so much work to the house, I wanted to show you guys a little bit of the before and after of everything that I've done around here this month and to show you where all of this money that I spent went. And also I will show you the ongoing process of all of the work that I'm doing outside of the house as well. It has been a lot around here recently. I, truth be told, I have been doing so much work around here recently that I have been burning the candle at both ends, y'all. I meant to get this video out and uploaded towards the end of last week. That didn't happen. I have been doing so much work around here that I got some very clear signals from my body that I needed to slow down and I listened. So I've basically just been taking the last few days off and not doing very much at all as far as physical labor around here goes. But with all that said, I will give you the little house tour. I'll show you around my house a little bit. When you first come in, I like that I can see my heather plant and my pothos plant here. This is my sunroom. I love the new gray color, y'all. So much better than the yellow. And this is my combined kitchen, living, dining room area. Playing an old video game. Tangelo tree, new couch, 
new rug, more house plants. I've got a whole story I need to tell y'all about that light, but I love it. And here is the bedroom. New fan compared to what I had before. My bathroom. Matches the light in the living room. Again, love the gray color. New light up there. New mirror, more plants. And lastly, my very tight closet slash laundry room slash dog food storage area. This is like the one area of storage in the whole house. So yeah, not much to my place, but I love it. And this is the thing that I love the most about rearranging my living room. I can sit on my couch and admire the view outside. All right, it is hot as hell out here, but got one more thing done. That was so, so majorly overdue. It is ridiculous how much I trimmed off of these bushes. Okay, I'm tired now. Here's my giant pile of about six tons of rock, and here's the one flower bed that I've done so far. This is the only one that didn't have a metal border around the flower beds. I don't know why the previous owners didn't do that for this flower bed, but at least all the rest of them do, and the rest of the flower beds ought to look a little bit neater along the borders than this one turned out. All right, y'all, that should wrap it up for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Going forward into October, my priority of financial goals are thusly. Number one, I have got to get my mom paid back ASAP. She did not have to front me all of that money to help cover everything that I have done and everything that needs doing around here, but she did out of the kindness of her heart, so I've got to get her paid back, number one. Number two, I have got to get my savings account built back up. My goal after getting mom paid back is to just stack as much cash in my high yield savings account as I possibly can over the next few months because number three, I want to get my 2020 Roth IRA maxed out. And I know that I have until April to do that. So as of right now, the plan is just going to be to shovel as much cash as I can back into my high yield savings account. And when it gets closer to that April 15th deadline, I will take a look at how much I have in there and get that Roth IRA maxed out. And I am hoping that I will still have enough left over to maintain a emergency fund of a few thousand dollars and then the plan is to start saving to finish fixing my driveway here at the house it it has desperately desperately needed paving i have got to get some asphalt put down in my driveway if i don't do that then it has to be at the very least re-graveled and the reason i don't want to re-gravel it again is because the grass and the weeds come back so quickly when you do that around here to me it just feels like a waste of money to go the gravel route again when ultimately i know that i am going to be here for the foreseeable future so I want to do something that's a little bit more permanent than gravel so I've got to start saving money for that as well and it's gonna be a large expense 
So those are my financial goals moving forward for the next few months. Y'all know me though, things are subject to change. This has been the craziest, most challenging year ever. And I know that I'm not the only one that feels that way. So it is what it is. We're all just doing the best that we can, right? So if you feel like following me on this crazy life journey, this goal that I have of financial independence someday, then feel free to subscribe down below, click that bell notification, and every time I upload another video, y'all will get notified. Thanks for watching if you made it through this epic video of mine. I usually do not put out videos this long. I'm glad you made it all the way to the end. If you did, thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.